Hey, it is July. We're doing our July garden tour. What is growing in the garden? I'll tell you right off the bat, I've decided to switch from growing vegetables and flowers to growing weeds. So it is going amazing. But seriously, there's a lot of weeds. Uh, we'll start off here in this bed where I direct sowed a bunch of stuff and none of it came up. Woo! Here are some carrots. Okay, someone explain this to me. So I hear a lot of people who have said that carrots are like biennial, like they only produce seed on their second year. I get seeds from my carrots every year. Is that like, are my carrots weird? Um, I did not sow enough carrots. This is all I have growing right now. I need to plant more and hope they get done before winter or we're not gonna have carrots. My sage looks so good. Let's see the rosemary. Uh, there it is. That's it. And we got some time. All right, here is one of three beds of onions. These are, let's see, um, they appear to be red onions. I planted red onions, white onions, yellow onions, but I don't know where I planted anything. The bed over there also looks like red onions. I don't know, but they're all right. I wanna chop off some of the tops to dehydrate and some to freeze. And then I feel like we're probably coming close to when you actually pull the bulbs out of the ground. I don't wanna miss it because I don't want them to like start rotting. That would be bad. Here's another bed of onions that looks a lot less good. <laughs> so like this one, obviously, obviously I need to be pulling this onion out because it's all flopped over. So here's the size onion that I grew. This is my first year successfully growing onion from seed. So while these are smaller than the onions you get at the store, I'm excited because, well, they're bigger than nothing. So can you braid onions like you do garlic? Is that an option for storage? Let me know. I kind of just want to pull all this and I think I probably will. I have decided there is no point in growing kale, cabbages, whatever, without a cover. There, it's just, it's pointless and it's, and it's gross. So I think I'm probably gonna pull them and then start again for the fall with a cover. But if I don't get a cover done, I probably won't even plant them because what is the point? They just get decimated every year from, from the cabbage whites, from those moths. So other than that, they look pretty good. And I did eat some, but it's just sad. Ooh, you found something, huh? Oh, running away. Is that a cicada? <laughs> so we designated one spot for the milkweed. This is it. It's going well. I found a bunch of monarch caterpillars. These are obviously done. See how they're making the seeds? They have the seed pods, but we're getting a second flush of um, flowers and the monarch caterpillars, which is very exciting. Here you can see some of the flowers opening on these younger ones. They smell amazing. And then I see some poop here, which means there must be a caterpillar nearby. They always look like underneath the leaves. Look under the leaves. There's one. Look how cute he is. Hi, you. That is quite enough of that, but I want you to know that this is probably the best year we've had for monarch ca caterpillars since I've lived here. So since I've been paying attention too, I guess. Over here, we have weeds. Over here, more weeds. Over there, more weeds. Um, I direct seeded a bunch of zinnia right here, and I need to pull some out and transplant them because it's too much zinnia. And behind it, I have, I think these are the dragon tongue bush beans. They haven't started making beans yet because I planted them later than my other beans, which are way over there. And I'll just jump over them. Whoa. Here I have eggplant, which have been eaten by, well, stuff. You look like you've been eaten a lot, but I think they'll still produce eggplants. So I have a row of eggplants and they look pretty good. We got some random peppers that are not near my other peppers. Okay, tomatoes. So I mentioned this in another video, but so we have a lot of tomatoes and some of them look like they're doing really well. These tomatoes all look pretty happy and healthy and growing, but I had a bunch that had like the leaf curl, which I've never had before. And I actually just pulled them I was like, I don't know if this is a vitamin deficiency, if this is a virus, if this is something that can be spread to others. So we just pulled them and threw them. I replaced some of them with other starts that I had and then some of them I just didn't. And I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll still get a good amount of tomatoes because we have a lot of tomatoes. Over here we have cucumbers. These are supposed to be for pickling and I hope I get enough to actually pickle them. Some more weeds going on here. So I started, this is my second patch of, obviously I have corn over there and sunflowers. And next year I will be switching them because you can't see the sunflowers from the house, which is really 
sad. I didn't realize the corn was going to get so tall. It is so freaking tall. So over here, I, for some reason, did the same thing. Here's corn and there's sunflowers. What a bummer. I would switch them if I could, but it's a little late now. Another bed of like brassica cabbage type things that needs to be pulled. I did get some kohlrabi. I think maybe they're supposed to be bigger, but I think they're done for. So we're going to be pulling them. Like, see, this one's really small and sad. But this one, this one looks all right. I think I can eat this, so we'll do that. I'm still trying to get like my brassicas on lock. Like, <laughs> I'm still working on it. These beds are gonna be pulled and then I'm gonna put asparagus here. These are gonna be permanent. So we're gonna put asparagus and then I need to do, I think we're gonna do strawberries. And then we'll just leave them and that'll be great. Oh my goodness. How many bees can you fit on one sunflower? They're so happy. The sunflower patch is just booming with bees. They got all their little pants on, pollen pants. And so many different kinds and every sunflower is just covered if you like bees oh my gosh up there i would say every year absolutely sunflowers are the, my bees favorite and when i say my i just mean like whatever bees are in my yard it's the favorite this patch is just humming sorry i just get so excited by all my little insects love my pollinators let me try to make my way back here without falling so interplanted with all the tomatoes I have um, zinnia on this fence. There's basil, oh, you can see it over there. I have basil interplanted on that fence. And then on all the posts, I have planted either um, red runner beans or the purple hyacinth. See the more purple leaves? Those are the purple hyacinth beans. And mostly I did that for the bees, for the pollinators, for the butterflies, for all that. But I am also going to be saving the beans because you can eat those too. So, and I have eaten the the purple ones. I don't know if those are the purple ones or the red ones, like kind of like as green beans. And those are really good too. So I'm gonna be eating some as like green beans when they're green and also saving some, letting them just go ahead and dry and then using those just as regular beans and to plant next year because this is all save seeds. That's the whole thing, trying to go for like saving seeds, be sustainable. Here is, one of my zinnia patches, all from save seeds. I just save seeds every year. I have a five gallon bucket full of seeds now because they're so prolific. Ooh, that's pretty orange one. So that's the great thing about seed saving is you can take like one, if you bought one packet of zinnia seed and planted it and then saved all the seed heads from those flowers the next year, if you did that after like two years, you would have more zinnia seeds than you ever knew what to do with. Like I said, I have like a five gallon bucket is so much. Here's our crookneck garden. <laughs> I had seeds and I thought I did zucchini and crookneck and then they all ended up being crookneck. Huh, that's the other thing I forgot. Over there there's some zucchini planted but we're not walking back over there. So there are going to be some zucchini but this this is all crookneck except for this one which apparently is an acorn squash. I don't know if you were here the other day where I put crookneck squash out on the road on a table with a sign that said free and somebody took the table. I am not joking. I know that's like a joke. I am not joking. Somebody took the table that the sign was on and didn't take the squash. These are melons. Um, I just had it written down as orange melon. So I don't know what that means. And I hope that they taste good. There's one, it's not orange yet, but. Whoa, this one's a lot bigger, look at that also not orange but i feel like for the amount of real estate that this vine takes up we should have more melons on it but i'm sure they'll get there three rows of green beans it was just the type that i got at rural king just a bush bean i know i saw some beans on this the other day do not come on man don't fail me now i'm doing a tour I'm doing a garden tour please where are the beans Ugh. Well, there's flowers, so there will be beans. I'm sure one day we'll have beans. These are my sweet potatoes, and I've been planting them in stages, so obviously those I planted a while ago, and then these I planted a little bit ago. Here's the, the melons starting to creep in from that side, and the pumpkin is creeping in from this side. I get all the creeping stuff together, so the sweet potatoes will also have to creep, and they'll have to fight. It's a, big, it's a cage match of potatoes and melons and pumpkins. Look at these pumpkins. 
Wow! They're so cool. These Long Island cheese pumpkins. I've never grown them before, but I am super pumped about it. I'm here for it. So, oh goodness. Back on over here, these are bell peppers, and I feel like I've only seen like one actual pepper on them. Oh, here's one. I can see you, you're in there. There, there's a pepper down here. I don't know what they're waiting for. <laughs> if you're waiting for a special invitation, I'm giving it to you. You are allowed to make peppers now, please do so. And then next to the peppers, I have another row of onions all the way down until they're engulfed by weeds. There are still some in the weeds, but yes onions that are still these are white onions look at them or yellow i don't know whatever they are they're not red and then i have a nice row of weeds and then there's some walking onions all the way down there in the weeds lots and lots of weeds now we're gonna look at this tree it's actually a bush this is not part of the garden tour but i just want you to know that if you ever plant an althea bush they grow massively big, and if you don't like that, then don't plant it. But also, if you do want to keep them small, you can like chainsaw them down right at the base, and they'll just grow back because they don't care. So in some ways, that's good. I like that. This is too big, and we're definitely going to cut it down, especially because it's right by our hose. But I have mixed feelings about it, but I don't like it this big. I think it looks weird. What do you think, Junior? Junior, your thoughts on the Althea bush? Would you like to say anything about the garden tour? Okay, thank you, Junior. So that is it for this section of the garden. We'll move on. Okay, we are now standing on the outside of the dog fence. There is no dog in the dog fence, it's just what we call it. And with my blackberries. So we have many wild blackberries on the property, but these are not wild. These are actually cultivated blackberries. They have no thorns, which is amazing. If you know, you know. Need one? Oh yeah. And you can have one. Okay, the perennial flower garden, which started off so spectacularly at this point is just on its own. You're on your own. Everything is so overwhelming with the other garden and just everything that's just like, survive, do your best, which it is. So are the weeds. They look great, but we have some daylilies. The hostas are blooming out. This will eventually be a bunch of aster and just kind of like hanging out with people like that. There are things growing in here and there are also a lot of weeds, but I'm fine with this is what we came to look at. This is, this is our sweet corn patch. So we have three patches of corn, although this is obviously by far the biggest. This is a sweet corn that we got at Rural King. My husband really likes sweet corn. He wanted it and we're gonna be canning some of it and eating some fresh and trying to freeze it. I don't know, hopefully it'll all just be amazing. So we have this, this is like obviously just like some type of hybrid sweet corn. And then over back in the other garden, I have two types of heirloom corn. One is a sweet corn. Um, I think it's called like Country Gentleman and the other is Glass Gem Corn. So I can already tell you that for next year, we're gonna be expanding our other patches of corn. We're definitely gonna be growing more corn because I wanna use it to feed the chickens in the winter and also just because we eat a lot of corn and it's, it's a grain and you can use it for things. So I think that's pretty much it. That's all I'm gonna show you. That's how the garden is doing. It is July, things are growing. We haven't reached like peak crazy harvest yet because uh, our tomatoes are always a little bit later. So it probably won't be till next month that we start getting crazy tomatoes in. And I expect everything to come in all at once so I can go like this. And then, and then it'll be over. And then we'll be in winter and I'll be like, what just happened? So how is your garden doing? Tell me what's growing where you are. And yeah, other than that, that's up. Maggie, I think you're a rooster. I mean, you really, I'm pretty sure, can I still call you Maggie? Maggie, Maggie, come back, Maggie.